a few minutes to get in. I hope you all had a great day. I did. It was very productive. Oh, I see a blue heart. Hi, Hannah. <laughs> How's the studying going, ma'am? <laughs> It always takes a second for the comment to come over. Hi, Blue. I feel like it's been forever since I caught you live. Yes, it has. <laughs> Thank you for the blue heart. Uh, good. I found out my lack of motivation was due to lack of sleep. Well, that could be part of it. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. That will affect you big time if you don't watch it. Hi, Denise. Oh. I am getting blue hearts from everybody. I love this. <laughs> All right. So tonight we are talking about apprentice. What is a medical coding apprentice? Particularly, what is a CPCA? People have been asking me, what is, uh, does AHIMA have this on their credentials? No, they do not. And so I'm going to be repeating that throughout the live because people keep asking this question so I want to make sure that it is very clear. The apprentice designation is a AAPC deal. <laughs> it is not an AHIMA deal. So I'm going to make that very clear today. Hannah says I got a whole seven hours of sleep. Now, um, all right, AAPC has a designation on their credential when you first get it, apprentice. Uh, particularly the CPC and what this means is this person has less than two years designation on this thing right uh, because this has a two-year time requirement there is a quicker way to remove this a and that is by taking their educational product called practicode and it has several uh, cases that you can do um, and it, they're just different uh, cases from real life and they of course redacted all the private information and because of this uh, they take off one year of your two-year time to have this uh, a designation the other um, part of getting that off of there is actually working as a medical coder so that is something that AAPC does for their coders AHIMA on the other hand does not have this at all there was uh, somebody that said that and they said it publicly and I tried to tell her no 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 and so she kind of got mad at me and that's okay I don't care because of the simple fact that you're putting out wrong information about our association and so because of this I want to make sure that that's very clear if I can catch it hey you said this wrong <laughs> you need to redact it or something and she's like well I don't know everything okay you know that's fine uh, but that's the thing. When you put out information, it needs to be clear. I have heard people say the certifications incorrectly as well. If you don't understand or you don't know the title of that designation, then you shouldn't say it. Or you should at least have the information in front of you so that you can read it off appropriately. Now, yes, everybody makes mistakes. I understand that. But again, we are in an association of detail. Whether you are with AHIMA or AAPC, it is all about the detail. If you can't get that detail right, there's mistakes that get made. 
And when they get made, they can be costly. So that's why I say every single time when people mess up my name, it's four letters. <laughs> B-L-E-U. <laughs> and I still get my name spelled so many different ways. Or they will say, instead of AAPC, they'll say AACP, guys. It's AAPC. I know it's a lot of letters, but you have to get the letters correct because you don't want somebody taking advantage of you because you don't know. It's very important to know and understand the little nuances for both AHIMA and AAPC, which is why I'm doing this video today about The Apprentice. Apprentice is only on AAPC credentials. With AHIMA, once you take your CCS, the Certified Coding Specialist exam, when you pass, you are a CCS, plain and simple, right out of the gate. You can display CCS. There is no nothing else, okay? CCS. Same thing if you sit and pass the CCSP, the Certified Coding Specialist Physician Base, okay? Same thing, CCSP, boom. Once you pass it, you're there. CCA is a Certified Coding Associate. Let's get that correct, okay? <laughs> And once you have that, you can have that designation, CCA. Now, I have had the CCA. I had the CCA for many years, and I stubbornly held on to it because I was tired of people saying, well, hey, the CCA this and CCA that. Oh, yeah, really? Let me show you what a CCA can do. So I had it for many years. <laughs> I had it up until March of this year. Now I have the CCSP. So when you are looking at these credentials, guys, you have to be detail oriented when it comes to these things. Know and understand what you're getting into. When people ask me this question about the CCS and oh, is there an apprentice period? Guys, no. And you can find that out by actually going to the website itself, um, ahima.org, A-H-I-M-A.org, or you can visit uh, aapc.com at aapc.com. <laughs> So that way you can find out about the credential that you want to sit for. When I hear from people that are getting all of these things confused, it's not confusing when you have read and understand what you're reading, right? Uh, when you go to AAPC, they will tell you about the apprenticeship and what does it mean. And for those people that say, well, you have to take practical, you don't have to take practical. I have known many people who have the CPCA and they get a job and they wait the two years because there is really no point in rushing to get that A designation off when you already have a job. Well, Blue, I can't get a job because I have a CPCA. And I know that's not true because I've known plenty of people who have gotten jobs. Now, when it comes to finding a job in this field, I've seen a lot of people get very frustrated. Nobody's giving me a chance. And I've been looking and I'm in debt and I wanna quit. Well, if it's that easy for you to quit, then there's something wrong, right? Because you, when it comes to this field, and I've always made it clear on my channel, I've never said only the pretty things. I've said all the difficult things as well. When it comes to being in this field, you have to put in the work. And maybe you're not going to start off as a coder right away. Maybe your path is to start off as a medical biller, and then you're going to work your way over into coding. Or maybe your path is to start as uh, prior authorizations, and then you work over into coding, because those are giving you some exposure to codes so that you can have that on your resume. And a lot of people, they put those blinders on, they want to get to, I want to be a coder, that's what I went to school for, and that's what I'm going to do. And nobody's hiring me because I don't have experience, or I have a CPCA. You have to be able to display all of your skills and all of your training. You may not have experience yet, but you do have training. And that is something that if you're discounting yourself for having this training, that's wrong, right? Because that's what you have. You have training and your, your skills are brand new. You have no bad habits to break. It has everything to do with your approach to finding a job. If you are applying and you have your resume and you have your cover letter and your cover letter sounds like everybody else's or you copied it from some template that you saw on the internet, that irritates me. When I hear from people that say, well, I'll just copy a, a, a resume that I see off the internet for a medical coder. It irritates me because these are the same people that have a difficult time finding a job. And then they tell other people, I had a difficult time, you're not gonna be able to find a job. And then 
not everybody has the same strength. And so they get discouraged right away. And they say, well, it's because I have an apprentice status. It's not because of that, guys. It has everything to do with how you're approaching your mission, which is to get a job. That is your mission, is to get a job. And when you give up really easily, this is not for you. This is not for people who give up easy. I will encourage anybody and everybody who really wants it. But if you want something that's that's going to be easy to get and easy to start and, and oh yeah, no, this isn't it. <laughs> and I'm just telling you so that you are aware. It is very difficult to get a job in the beginning, but it's not impossible. So putting together a really good cover letter, putting together a really good resume. And I have plenty of advice videos on putting together a really good cover letter, really really good resume. And I'm talking about this more lately because more people are coming out about it. I guess like there's it's a season for people to have finished uh, school and now they're out there looking for a job and they're like, wait a second, I can't find one. And is it because of this apprentice status? No. Apprentice status, I mean that, if you go through that period of time appropriately, right, with the apprentice status, that AAPC designates. This is a good thing because this says that you are still in the development process. Not that you are not worthy <laughs> of employment, but that you are still in the development process. And when you try to speed through that, I think it shortcuts and stunts your growth as a medical coder, as a brand new medical coder, because you're, you're trying to make yourself look more experienced by getting a string of credentials or or trying to take that that a off right away and well that will make me get in quicker at the end uh, when you have more credentials it's more money it's more money that you have to put out for continuing education units and all the stuff when the one credential says that you can do a lot of that stuff so that's my <laughs> that's my thing on that but again apprentice is just an aapc product just like practicode is just an aapc product um, while Practicode is great, again, you don't have to take it. Uh, it's not necessary to put out as much money as you think it is. When I got started, it took me two months to find a job. And I still worked in my other jobs. <laughs> I was a bartender. Uh, I worked at a halfway house. I cleaned houses. I did all that stuff before I finally found um, the temp agency when I got registered with them and they happened to have an assignment. So that's how I was able to get in. And that was how I was able to get going. So sometimes people get their start working in a temp agency. So, uh, hi Ellie, thank you for the blue heart. Hi Christina, hi Marissa. Yes, it is two years to get the CEUs for the CPC, Hannah, yes. So um, everybody, that's with AHEMA or AAPC. They have that similarity. <laughs> um, but let's go to the AAPC website and let's read about the, what is the apprentice status right here. Come on. Unless you have two years of medical coding experience prior to taking the CPC exam, you will receive the CPCA credential when you pass. The A indicates apprenticeship status which requires two years of experience to graduate from the designation. Upon submitting proof of two years of coding experience, your apprentice status will be dropped from your credential. Practicode and Project Extern both provide medical coding experience that AAPC will apply to your apprenticeship requirement, reducing the apprenticeship period by one year. Now, there are some people who get confused by this and they think, oh, does this mean that if I go through Practicode or Project Extern that that's one year of experience I can put on my resume and I can tell employers that I've had one year of experience? No, that is not true and you cannot do that. Um, Practicode is an educational product. It is not meant as work experience. For work experience in the real world, in jobs to apply, real world experience it has to have met the requirements of like production standards and accuracy standards obviously practicode being an educational product does not have that so um that's something that you have to know when you are out there and you're trying to get experience right they want experience of you actually working 
in a place, not that you completed a practicode or other educational product program. So that is something else to know. Um, there's a lot of weird things <laughs> when it comes to being a coder, but I always tell people, the more you look at the website, the more you look at the credential that you're going to go sit for, um, the better you understand it, the more in control you're going to feel because knowing all of those things, that's going to be very helpful for you. Um, and they talk about how to prepare for the CPC exam. And they say the same thing I say. Step one, spend enough time with your code books to ensure you can navigate them quickly, including the essential appendixes. So if you haven't been looking at those appendixes, you got to make sure you're looking at them. Um, though you may not attach additional information to your code books, you should, you can and should write notes in the margins. And what they mean by that is like when you are going through and you're writing like little notes uh, as far as like uh, just the day to day things, they don't want you writing out paragraphs. They don't want you writing out coding clinics or anything like that. You cannot do that. Um, I did not write in my book at all. Uh, but I took <laughs> the AHIMA exam, uh, so I took the CCA. So I've never taken an APC exam. But in my time when I came up, <laughs> which was back in 2008, when I sat for my CCA, they were very strict about no tabs, uh, no writing in the book, you know, very little things. You know, they didn't want you highlighting nothing. You had to use the books as they were. And I keep telling everybody, the books already have the answers. They don't need you to add more to it because it already has what it needs, right? So you want to make sure that you're spending time with the book. And if you ask me, well, Blue, how did you tab your books? I, I don't like tabs. Tabs get in my way. And like I said, when I came up, they didn't want us to have tabs. <laughs> so because they didn't want us to have tabs, I didn't have them. And I got used to working without them. And you don't need them if you are consistently practicing with your book. Uh, if you are not practicing with your book, that's when you're going to feel those panicky feelings because you don't know the book like you should, right? And if you're going to go take the certification exam, you're spending a few hundred dollars, right, to, to be taking this. So you want to make sure that you're going to feel as ready as possible. You may not feel 100% ready, but you need to feel at least as comfortable navigating the book. And you will feel comfortable navigating the book if you've taken the time to go through all the pages in the book and know what the appendixes are for. People ask me all the time for my book recommendations on a certain topic that I can't name <laughs> in the video. But if you take the time to look through your book, especially if you have an Opta360 coding book, in the appendix, it's got lots of references back there. And so that is something that's very helpful if you need to kind of look in and you don't know what a particular item is that they're talking about. You can find a lot of that information in the appendix um, as far as like what the patient is taking, if you catch that. Um, uh, the tip three is because the CPC exam focuses on CPT coding, invest extra time in learning your way around this manual. This website, this AAPC website is saying the exact same thing that I have been telling you guys. Look at the website. Um, use the tabs to mark and quickly reference important pages and sections of your code book. Again, if you're doing that already, you're not going to need it. Uh, when taking the test, Answer the easy questions first. Be sure to return to the skipped questions. Do not leave a question blank. Um, in one, a one in four chance of getting the answer correct is better than zero chance. So they're telling you to answer all of the questions, whether you know the answer or not. Uh, I tell people all the time, don't get hung up on something. If you know, you don't, you can't, you don't understand a particular specialty, right? Do the best you can and try to get through it as best as you can. Cho choose, look at the answers that are available. Choose the one that you think is the closest because you have a one in four chance of getting that answer correct. Now, if you're really looking at the answers that are available, you know you're going to be able to eliminate a couple of them because a couple of them are not going to make sense. So then that, <laughs> that ups your chances, right, to one in two. And so that's the thing, that's a one in two chance of getting it correct. So look at it and be present with your test. And that's all I'm gonna say on that one. 
Um, you have approximately two minutes to answer each question, so hone your focus and save time by reading the possible answers before reading the question. I've talked about that as well. When you're going through your workbooks, read the questions first and then go through the workbook, like the section, the passages or whatever. So that way you know uh, what they're going to ask. And that's the same thing that they're telling you on this one. You can look at your answers and then you can read the question and you have roughly two minutes. Now, it doesn't mean that for every question you're going to spend two minutes on, there's going to be some that you're going to fly right through because you'll be able to answer those quickly. But then there's going to be some that is going to take you a couple more minutes. So that's why they say just make sure that you get through uh, expediently, right? And lastly, don't panic. Breathe, relax, and focus. This thing says, and I've never read this <laughs> until the, to this episode, uh, but this thing says exactly the same things I keep telling you guys. Don't panic. Uh, this thing is just testing you on the fundamentals and what you know. You... I mean, there's some people that say, well, and I actually got a letter from somebody the other day who said, well, Blue, I didn't make as high a score as I wanted to on my CPC exam. Should I go back and take it again? No, you just passed it, dude. No, don't take it again. You passed it. That was the whole goal. At the end of the day, your employer is not going to look at your score. They don't care. Do they, they care about the fact that you have your credential. Whether you barely passed it or you passed it by a few touchdowns, they don't care. Their main focus is that you're certified. That is all they care about. So it is, if you know you did not make a score that you, you are very proud of, then that tells you that you need to, to continue on your own. Like I tell everybody, regardless of whether your score was, right? Regardless of what it was. If you have made a really high score, it doesn't mean that you know everything. <laughs> Okay, it just means that you do well on tests. And so I always encourage people to still continue to study. I still continue to study, even though I've been doing this since 2008. I still study. And some weeks I study 10 hours, some weeks I study 20 hours. That is on top of my 40 hour a work week schedule, on top of my time here with you guys in the evenings, and on top of <laughs> uh, my time with Patreon and tutoring and resume reviews. I still manage to squeeze in either 10 hours or 20 hours, depending on how busy the week is. So if I can do it, <laughs> and I've been doing it, so that is something that you'll get used to with time. And before you say, well, Blue, I have a family, I want to spend time with them. Yes, but you can still spend half an hour, an hour still reading. That's not going to take away time from your family. That is a small investment in you. Um, and it's a small investment in your future and getting stronger, you know, with your coding skills, because it is about that. It is about getting strong with coding skills. Um, come on. And it says which um, AAPC says which what? Uh, medical coding certification is best. AAPC's CPC certification is renowned globally by physicians, payers, and government agencies. There are other certifications as well, all of which hone, I think they meant hone in, they said home in, <laughs> on a um, medical specialty or a specific business of medicine role. You can find this list um, of these on our website. So they're talking about the other specialty credentials, but they, they do recommend of all of theirs, they say the CPC, which I recommend um, of all of those. The people will ask me, Blue, do you recommend the CPC or the COC? I'm going to go with the CPC because even though employers, I will occasionally see some employers ask for the COC, most of the time I'm seeing them ask for a HEMA credentials or the CPC. So. Uh, with that, you know, that's why I always recommend the one that you're going to get the most bang for your buck, which is in, from AAPC, the CPC. Now, of course, if you're already certified with AHIMA, you do not need to get uh, another certification from AAPC, okay? You have certification already. That's all you need on that side. Um, if you are with AAPC and you perhaps want to go with the CCS or something, or you want to go with another certification, that is fine, but uh, keep in mind that when you're adding on credentials from another association, 
you want to make sure that you're not doubling up <laughs> and saying the same thing okay uh sometimes i've seen people who have the cpc and the ccsp and both literally say the same thing that you can code in the outpatient setting the test is different <laughs> way different <laughs> but uh it, they both say that you can code in the outpatient setting so unless this is a employer request you know they're they're literally saying the same thing and it's, it gets more expensive the more you put on um hi hi katoya hannah when you're looking for a job they will see that you have experience or not so doing practico to bypass the a won't really help agree yes i agree um the cpc study guide has a little blurbs saying to write this or that in the book christina says to hannah that is a good that is good to know when i have to get to it ellie says that's what i'm trying that's what that's what i'm always thinking my investment so i won't get tired of studying sometimes i fall asleep while reading <laughs> it happens it happens oh so you know i mean it's it's i told you guys i was going to repeat this again with the CCS, there is no apprentice <laughs> status on it. Apprentice is only with AAPC. Apprentice is an AAPC designation and they have their rules about it. And I think it's right that they have that because when you have to spend time learning and because their tests are vastly different from a HEMAS test, okay, it is okay to have that designation and don't be ashamed of it. And there's people that say, well, should I leave the apprentice status off? No. <laughs> when you are applying and that is the designation that you hold, the CPCA, leave it on there <laughs> because they're going to find out anyway. When they verify your credential, they will find out that you're an apprentice. And if you tried to get in with just having that um, CPCA and they wanted you to be a CPC, you may lose out, you know, so uh <laughs> thanks hannah <laughs> but anyway so does anybody have any questions about this hopefully this um answered the question about the apprentice status did it answer it for you guys because i can't think of another way to say it <laughs> you know yes no <laughs> Tomorrow I'm going to be talking about accreditation because there are some people that are getting confused with accreditation and I'll get into that tomorrow. There will be no Q&A Tuesday tomorrow because there was not enough questions. So um, you're welcome, Hannah. <laughs> uh, but yes, so it's up to you guys. Uh, just let me know if you have any requests for other shows and I guess I can go ahead and wrap this one up. This was a fast show tonight, but it is monday night so all right i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up <laughs> thanks guys and i will see y'all next time hit the thumbs up like subscribe if you haven't already and i will see y'all next time bye